This week we're in Shrewsbury for a lorry, but not any old petrol or diesel affair, no nothing modern or anything like that. The beauty we're planning to restore is powered by coal. It's a steam lorry. <laughs> A hundred years ago, if you'd been in the market for a heavy goods vehicle, you wouldn't only have been scratching your head thinking, do I buy a Volvo or a Merc? You'd have been saying, is it the internal combustion engine for me, or should I go for an electric lorry or good old steam? If you'd opted for steam, then you'd probably have gone for one of these. A Sentinel steam lorry, the Rolls Royce of the puffing world. Capable of lugging over 15 tonnes at speeds of up to 40 miles an hour. The Sentinel was such a good vehicle, they were still making them in the 1950s. And the unlikely steam enthusiasts, who now want us to bring one back to life, are these two young whippersnappers, Edward and Andrew Goddard. Two good-looking young boys from Shrewsbury falling in love with a steam lorry is not as unhealthy as you may think. Sentinels made up the pulling power of the family firm for two generations. Morris's lubricants, and if the boys want to run the firm in the future, then there better be a working steam lorry in the yard. Our adventure starts here at an oil factory. Oh, very slippery business, Claire. Yeah, that's why you got your loafers on, eh? These, Claire, are industrial steel toe cap loafers. Right, right. And you must be the Goddard brothers. Yeah. Pleased Hello. to meet you. Hey, Pleased to meet you. All right. I'm going to have a look at the job if you don't mind. <laughs> well, here it is. Here, there, and everywhere, in fact. In bits, with the cab missing, it's difficult to imagine it once looked like this. The actual steam engine that moves the Sentinel is under the chassis behind the cab. It drives the rear wheels via a chain. At first inspection, all of that looks in pretty good nick. But the key to the Sentinel's power was its boiler. It's up in the front where the engine would be on a modern truck. Well, there's a big hole here as to where the boiler should be. I think there's plenty of woodwork to be getting on with as well. Quite a mess, isn't it? It is, but we had a problem with the boiler earlier in the year, and we got a little bit carried away, as you can tell. So, we tidied it up for you, though. <laughs> I'd have hate to have seen it before it was tidied. Well, I must say, I can look at these bits all day, and they mean nothing to me. We'll leave Claire to have a proper look, and why don't you come and explain to me what this is all about? OK. Well, the Goddard boys looked like they knew what they were doing when they took it apart, but let's hope we can put it back together. So back in the 20s and 30s, the company used to have four Sentinel steam wagons and they used to drive them in through here and then unload them here. Must have been quite a sight, four of those steaming beasts in here. Yeah, this used to all be cobbled right up the yard here and they used to uh, back the wagons in and it used to be covered in oil and they used to be able to uh, slide the big wagons across by hand. They must have got a few blokes behind it and... Uh, no health and safety in the 1930s Not a lot, I don't, I don't think, think so. Though. I think things have moved on since then. Like any thrusting firm, the Goddard sold off their Sentinels in the late 1940s in favour of the modern diesel. But they're a traditional bunch up in Shrewsbury, and 30 years later, nostalgia got the better of them. Out came the chequebook, and Morris Oils owned a Sentinel once more. But at 72 years old, this grand old lady's heart is giving out. Well, all this stuff looks a mess, but don't worry about it. The boiler, though, that's the problem. It might look like a rusty barrel, but this thing was the steam world's equivalent of Concorde, a steam plant so efficient that it held out against the internal combustion engine for almost 50 years. But just like Concorde, the Sentinel's boiler is a thing of the past. So to rebuild one, we're going to have to start from scratch. How's it looking? <laughs> well, this bit's looking particularly rough, but never mind. This, I presume, is the heartbeat of the entire machine, yes, the boiler. Yes, yeah. Yeah, see, so you're learning. I am. I'm an expert, as you know. Even my <laughs> cursory knowledge could tell you that that's pretty knackered. As you so rightly know, they don't make them anymore. <laughs> because I'm an expert, aren't I, Because you're an expert, yeah. That's right. So, uh, I've got a guy in mind, though, Andrew Melrose. He is the king of steam. Even I know that. There is only one man in the country who'd be crazy enough to take on a task like this. Andy Melrose, the man we call the King of Steam. Andy's taken on a whole bunch of salvage squad projects and breathed life into them all. Jobs are good, huh? But this one's different. Almost no one has made a boiler like this in 60 years, and that includes Andy. Right, no promises, gentlemen, but let me ring Andy and see what we can do. But the deal would be you won't be able to see it until it's done. I trust Claire, so... <laughs> <laughs> so do I. <laughs> no trust in me, then. Oh, well. And I trust <laughs> Andy Melrose. <laughs>
It seems the only thing the others will trust me not to mess up is the detective work. So my quest this week will be to track down the history behind our lorry and find out exactly how the Sentinel steam wagon, so advanced for its time, eventually became extinct. Meanwhile, it's down to Andy's Somerset workshop, while the rest of the repairs are put on the back burner. It looks a bit rough, doesn't it? It does look rough. Because if Andy can't fix the boiler, this restoration will be over and all the other work will be futile. So have we finally met our match with this puffing juggernaut? This boiler's not only complex, it was designed to be made by machines in a big factory, not knocked out by hand in a shed. What? But if we can't find a way of doing the job, this old sentinel will never puff again. This week on Salvage Squad, we're attempting to finish the restoration of a 1930s sentinel steam lorry for these two young fuddy-duddies, Andrew and Edward Goddard. And I must admit, I'm rather concerned about what's happening to the youth of today. What is it about these young boys in steam? I mean, what happened to record players and guitars and birds? But then I'm just a city boy, which is why the lads have invited me out into the country to try and turn me on to ladies who chuff. Meanwhile, me and Andy are getting our Sentinel steam boiler ready for the operating theatre. Although not much bigger than a domestic hot water tank, this is one powerful bit of kit. It consists of an outer pressure jacket and an inner firebox. The whole firebox is surrounded by water and dozens of tubes pass the water through the firebox itself. Once the heat gets going, this boiler is incredibly efficient, kicking out steam at 250 pounds per square inch to power her twin-cylinder, double-acting engine. It's a bit different to moving a boat, locomotive boiler it about, is, isn't it? It's so small, it's so yeah. small. Does it have the same sort of power? It was amazing how effective they were at generating steam. Yeah. I mean, you know... The, yeah. it's, it is very small compared to our yeah. big traction engines that, and all the rest of it. I mean, you it. think, you know, what we're looking at there is the fire area. Yeah. It's tiny, isn't it? the heating area is just what we see there. Yeah. Compared with a similar locomotive boiler. Yeah. Very small, but very effective. The problem we have is that Sentinel's boilers were made by machines long gone. If we have to start remaking the outer jacket or the firebox with their complex curves, then we're going to be in for a rough ride. But at the moment, we can't even get the two apart. It's harder than it looks. Now is the moment of truth. It's the first time we can look inside the boiler to find out just how bad it is and how much we're going to have to replace. Well, it hasn't fallen apart quite like I hoped, but... No, but... It's not too I bad. I think it's well on the way, don't you? Oh! Finally. And that was it. Right, shall we get it out, then? Yep, yeah, thank goodness for that. After half a day's struggle, the thing finally comes apart. And it ain't looking good. We need to clean off some sample areas to get a look. I mean, this doesn't look too encouraging here, does it? Where's the vulnerable areas, then? Well, that's the worst one, down round there. Up right round the flange, yeah? In the yes, corner. it's at the bottom, of course, when the cord is the right way up. And this area here, I'm a bit worried about because this does look quite heavy, this pitting. Yeah. And the amount of scale on it. But what we're really, really concerned about at the moment is thickness. <laughs> look at all the crap in the bottom. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> that was a technical the bottom, term there. Yeah. <laughs> Corrosion has already eaten into the outer jacket. But if the firebox turns out to be as badly damaged, we're in serious trouble. Only Andy will be able to make that call. But first, I've got to clean the lime scale off so that he can take a closer look. Fingers crossed.
whilst Claire and Andy assess the scale of the task, I'm about to get close up and personal with two young men and a steamy lady. Edward and Andrew have invited me to come and fondle their second favourite girl, a 1902 Burrell traction engine. All right there, chaps. All right, Sokes, how are you? How are you, Very well indeed. <coughs> come down here. I'm starting to feel like a peasant talking to the landed gentry. Tell me, young chaps of your age, shouldn't it be like motorbikes and sports cars? No, uh, What's uh, the... Uh, uh, we don't like to move quite that fast in Shropshire. It only goes about four or five miles an hour, really. And uh, it's got a water tank at the back end, which only lets you go about seven miles to a tank full. We prefer the Sentinel, really, for going greater distances. The burrow is a biplane compared to our Concorde of a Sentinel. The things all boil a piston and flywheel. Yeah. Mind you, it is kind of fun. Three point turn. Keep, 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 See if I can pass my keep, test keep, first keep, time. Keep winding, keep winding. Keep winding. <laughs> Crushing my car with a steam engine. I keep wanting to plan again for this. Yeah. You wait until you get to the central. You almost had a nasty moment then. <laughs> <laughs> so busy shouting and making jokes, really did nearly take a hedge out there. There's a lot of them about, eh? Well, fellas. You got me worryingly close to feeling like I was an enthusiast up there. You didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> I was speechless. <laughs> if a burrow can be so much fun at four miles an hour, a sentinel at 40 is going to be a gas. So long as Claire and Andy don't find too many nasties with the boiler. What about the firebox, Andy? Can we use it? Yes, it'll, it'll do. It's, it's not great, but it'll do a couple of years. That's really no problem. Mm -hmm. What about the outer shell? Though? Yes, this is a different matter. This, this is really absolutely had it. It needs a new one. It can't be repaired. The amount of wastage is uh, it's so it's wasted really bad. and pitted. There's yeah. not a lot of metal left in no, places. Absolutely. No. So if we can't repair it, we're going to have to make a new one. Exactly. Yes. Are you feeling nervous about it or confident? Oh, you've always got to be confident, haven't you? <laughs> Never been nervous. We'll see it as a challenge, shall we? It's got definitely a challenge. That's right, it's definitely going to be a challenge. Things could have been worse. We're only going to have to remake the outer jacket. But we've got no plans to go on. Hence my promotion from engine driver to detective and my appointment at the Shropshire Record and Research Centre, home of the Sentinel Archive. Hopefully I'll be able to track down some old blueprints to help the workers down in Somerset. Well, I've been given quite a few of these acetates of the various bits, components of the Sentinel steam wagons. But it's kind of pot luck as to whether I'm actually going to find anything that's of any use to Andy and Claire. Luckily, archives expert Andrew Davidson has been doing some digging on my behalf and has found some full-size plans that might do the trick. Well, we've got just a few plans that would have been uh, about the original size of the drawn plans, but very few, and yeah. you can see what you make of them. The draw, rear drawbar support pressing, I'm sure it's great interest to somebody out there, but not to me. Hold on, this looks quite interesting. This, yeah, this. The Sentinel Patent Water Tube Boiler. This could be exactly what Andrew Melrose is looking for. Yeah, 